Sports. We are the fork. We are the light. Danny Salazar was the story yesterday, dazzling the Orioles with his fourth double-digit strikeout game of the season. Pitching will be the plot line today as well. Carlos Carrasco rides a three-game winning streak into today's game against the Orioles. The Tribe tries to get back to the 500 mark and make it three straight series wins next on Sports Time Ohio. Oh, what a difference a day makes. A beautiful afternoon in downtown Cleveland as the Indians try to make it two out of three against the Baltimore Orioles. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Danny Salazar punched out 10 birds yesterday. The Indians starters lead all of baseball with 367 strikeouts. And today, Carlos Carrasco will tow the rubber for the Tribe, and he's trying to build on a streak in which he has struck out seven or more in five consecutive starts. That's a career high for him. And Carlos Carrasco has had a decision in every start this year. He's been given Terry Francona length in the... uh in that starting rotation. As a matter of fact, seven starts with at least six innings. And he's got the strikeout pitch work, and he's looking for his third consecutive win at home. Carlos has been very, very good this year. Yeah, I mean, anytime you see him out there, he's going late into the ball game. Up against the Orioles, he's pitched very well in his career. He's uh, His last three starts, a 171 ERA. Going against Bud Norris, coming off the disabled list today. He's had bronchitis, but he hasn't pitched very well against left-handers. A 400 batting average against them. He hasn't won on the road, so it all looks good for the Indians before the game starts. And you know what's really interesting about the Tribe right now is how this starting rotation is feeding off of each other. The strikeouts, the wins, getting deep into the ball game. When we come Come back. Andre Knott will join us to tell us why the rotation is having so much success of late. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
and cloudy in downtown Cleveland as we get ready for the series finale. Can the Indians make it two out of three and stay on their red-hot roll and get back to the 500 mark? Well, we're about to find out. But before we start today's ball game, let's go down to Andre Knott, who has more on the Indians' starting rotation. I don't want to steal your thunder here, but the best way to illustrate how these guys are feeding off of each other, last 19 games, they're a combined 12-3 and three with just a 2.84 ERA. Why? The numbers are outstanding. I'd say competition amongst a very three, four very competitive guys is part of it. But if you heard a little bit of my Danny Salazar interview that we just had, they feed off Corey Kluber, and then they work their way down, and they all are pushing one another. This is about Carlos Carrasco. We can look at the numbers over the last three starts. They've been amazing. But the one word I get from everyone around him is maturity. He's one of the best teammates in the clubhouse. He laughs and talks with everyone. But if you go back to that Toronto game, third inning, May 1st, when Mickey Calloway had to go out there, and he had to read him the riot act, and he had to basically tell him, be aggressive. Your stuff is good enough and better than almost anyone else that gets on this plate. Start using it. Be aggressive with your fastball. Play off your changeup. He's become a different pitcher, guys, and suddenly one of the best in the American League when he rolls the way he's rolled the last three starts. Well, that's the one thing I've noticed over the last three weeks is the starters. Each and every one of these four have established the fastball first and gone to their breaking stuff after that. And the strikeouts are there. When they get ahead in the count, Matt, they expand the hitter strike zone. They have swing and miss stuff. Not many guys put the ball in play, but they are feeding off each other. It is fun to watch because it can go on like that for a long time because these guys are only going to get better for the most part, and Corey Kluber's rolling. I mean, they, they all look to him because he was the guy that did it last year, so he's taking a lot of pressure off for all these young guys that never had a lot of starts before. You know, you talk about the strikeouts, and the Indians pitching staff leads all of baseball in strikeouts. They're averaging almost 10 punch-outs per game. Right. And to give you an idea how many strikeouts they have as a group, the next closest team to them in the American League is Tampa Bay. And they're 47 strikeouts behind where the Indians are at right now. Well, yeah, th- I like that. But let's not get caught up into the strikeouts because that's uh, more pitches sometimes when you go out there. I like these guys. Be aggressive. Let these guys put them in play. You will see these guys go deeper and deeper into ball games, And then that takes pressure off the bullpen. Much easier to match up. Carrasco, his last seven starts, at least six innings. He went six innings once. Then his next shortest was six and two-thirds. Then it's seven and plus. So that, to me, means more when those starters can eat up the innings and take pressure off the bullpen. You know what I love about the stat? You know, you were just talking about there with Carrasco and how he's been consistently getting deep into games. Remember back just a year ago when we weren't sure if he'd be a starting pitcher again. Right. And when he came back, one of the things that he told us was, when I was starting before I went to the bullpen, I was thinking about, how am I going to get to the sixth inning? How am I going to get to the seventh inning? He was thinking, you know, putting the cart before the horse, literally. Uh-huh. And then when he came out of the bullpen, it's one batter at a time, one pitch at a time. And now what do you know? Boom, he's getting into the sixth, seventh, eighth inning every time. And, and they're doing that by by focus. And I'll tell you what, that's why the bullpen's gotten better in the month of May. And, and, and from that point on, it's because the starters have gone deeper into the games. goes hand in hand. Carlos Carrasco and the Indians take the field. And we'll get a look at Buck Showalter's starting lineup today. For the Baltimore Orioles, presented by Toyota. Manny Machado in the leadoff spot, followed by Travis Snyder. Adam Jones, one of the best hitters in day baseball, hitting 434 in afternoon games, will hit third. Matt Wieters, Chris Davis, and Delman Young occupy the middle third. Then it's Jimmy Paredes, J.J. Hardy, and Ryan Flaherty. And today's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher, Carlos Carrasco, towing the rubber for the Indians. He's 28 years old. He's making his 12th start. Off to a very good start, 7-4, and four, 392 earned run average. Don't look at the numbers. You just look how he's been pitching. Excellent. He has a decision in, in every start. You look at the win leaders, and he's trailing Felix Hernandez, and that's it. And we won't see him again. He won yesterday, beating Tampa Bay 2-1. to one, But Carrasco's right there. And, and what Andre said, his personality has been outstanding. He likes to joke around, have fun, and he's a different uh, different person this year. Let's check that defense out behind Carlos this afternoon. It's brought to you by Chrysler. It'll be Murphy gets the start in left field. Borner's in center, Moss over and right. Chisenhall at third, Avila's in short. Kipnis at second, Santana at first. Gomes behind the plate, and they've been playing very good defense. Uh, no errors in their last five games. One in their last 11. So you continue to do that with good starting pitching, and you're not going to give up very many runs. 
Good to have Jim Joyce back with us today for the series finale. He's the crew chief. He'll be down at first base, one of the best umpires in the game, widely respected, missed the first two games of the series, but always good to see him back and joining the crew here today, talking with Wayne Kirby before we start things up here this afternoon. Windows Systems game time temperature going to be 80 degrees, and whatever breeze we have will be carrying out today. Direct contrast to what we had yesterday, where we had 15 to 20 mile an hour winds blowing straight in. Knocked a number of balls down, including a ball that was just mashed by Brandon Moss that, that died right at the center field ball wall. Might have been over those green trees today. <laughs> I was going to say, it'd be a different story. It, if he can hit it today. <laughs> We're all set and ready to go as Carlos Carrasco peers in. And his first pitch runs inside, ball one to Manny Machado. Machado batting 263 on the year. Gone two for eight in the series with a home run. And that was an opposite field shot that carried out the right field. Inside corner, a strike to even the count. Yeah, it was a high fastball from Salazar yesterday that he, you know, sliced it through the wind and right. It had a little carry to it, but he hit it well. And it was the only run of the game for Baltimore. Yep. But Salazar was awesome yesterday. Checked his swing on a ball low and away. Swung on and missed. Good off-speed pitch. And Machado swung over the top two and two. You're going to see a slider, Carrasco slider going down and away. It's about 88, and you can see the hitter pulls off of that pitch thinking it's the fastball. Got a piece of that to stay alive. Travis Snyder waiting on deck. Out of play down the right side. Buck Showalter's club, five games below 500 coming into play today. Currently tied for the bottom spot in the AL East. One percentage point behind Boston. And the 2-2 to right field. Backs goes Moss and makes the catch one away. The keys to the game are brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Fastball location. For Carlos Carrasco will obviously be important. And the the clutch hitting, which was absent yesterday, they'll need to take advantage of those opportunities this afternoon. The Indians were fortunate to get the win yesterday. Yeah, you get a two to one win during the course of the year, and that's that's a special win. Put it this way, the Indians were either fortunate to win or Baltimore was fortunate to still be in the game in the ninth inning, given the lopsided number of hits and runners on base and scoring opportunities. As Terry Francona will tell you, at the end of the year, they don't ask you how you won, it's how many did you just, win. <laughs> just win. You know, it doesn't, you're right, the score. You remember... And it wasn't long ago, Matt, that the Indians were the last team, or last in the league as far as one-run games go. You know, so now they have already played 11 of them. Duck. No balls, two strikes for Travis Snyder. And he got a piece of that, another one fouled right back. He's taking dead aim on Carey. You know, Carey was up here yesterday, and he was missed down there behind the plate. So now that one got him on the kneecap. You go back to back to get him. They missed you, Carey. 
<laughs> he gives the, uh-huh. the high are. sign. Yeah. Again, the 0-2. He checked his swing. And a ball and two strikes. Snyder, two for four with a run scored in series play so far. Adam Jones waiting on deck. Swung out and missed. He strikes him out. Two down in the first. This is going to be our circle K strike. Huh? You look at a changeup going down. Good pitch. When you ride that fastball up, those hitters look upstairs, and then you throw that little changeup that never seems to get there. He gets his first strikeout today. That's number 75 on the year. Here is Adam Jones now. Jones currently seventh in the American League in batting average, hitting 309. Well, and away, ball one. Jones has had a productive series. Three hits, all three extra base hits, a double, a triple, and a home run. He launches this one deep to left, headed for the seats, and it's gone. And Adam Jones gives Baltimore a one to nothing lead with his ninth home run of the year, RBI number 30. Well, that's his second home run in the series, and both home runs have come off the breaking ball. He got Sean Markham that way the other night, and it's Carrasco here with a slider, and he hits it up into the seats in left field. So Baltimore is going to play from in front today, one nothing on Adam Jones' ninth home run. Two down now for Matt Wieters. Matt Wieters looks at a ball down low, 2 0. Wieters, 3 for 7 in the series, coming back off the disabled list. His first action of the season coming in this series. But despite the fact that he hasn't played all year, he's right back in the middle of the lineup, hitting cleanup today. Kipnis throws him out. The inning is over. But Adam Jones homers for the second time in the series, and Baltimore has a 1-0 lead as the Indians are coming to bat. Terry Francona's starting lineup today is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Jason Kipnis will lead it off, followed by Carlos Santana. 
David Murphy batting third. He's been locked in at the plate. Brandon Moss, Nick Swisher, Lonnie Chisenhall. Then it's Jan Gomes, Michael Bourne, and Mike Avilas. And this afternoon, starting Northern Ohio starting pitcher is Bud Norris, making his first start since the 10th of May. He's 30 years old, 2-0 against his career in uh, against the Indians. Let's check out that defense behind him today, brought to you by Chrysler. It looks like this in the outfield. It's going to be Snyder, Jones, and Young on the infield. Machado, Hardy, Flaherty, and Davis with Weeders doing the catching. Jason Kipnis. Batting 398 on the year here at home. That's the best home batting average in the American League. His 332 overall average, his second best in the AL, second only to Prince Fielder. You know, I don't know if it's a pro- if it was just one of those days yesterday or if it's a product of how well he's swinging the bat and how well he's seeing the ball, but he walked three times in yesterday's game. Well, when you're when you're on a roll like that, sometimes p- teams will try and pitch around you to see if you swing and make that other guy beat you behind you. Marvin Hudson rings him up. Kipnis does not like the call. Let's go down to Andre, who has some more on Orioles starter Bud Norris. Yeah, he's going through a tough situation. His last start was on May 10th. Then he started losing a bunch of weight, and he had bronchitis. Now, usually you don't go on the DL for bronchitis, but because he couldn't keep weight on, Buck Showalter thought it was best for him to take some time off to get his body right and get that 10 pounds back. Uh, but he did pitch four hitless innings his last tune-up in AAA. But he basically lost 10 to 15 pounds because of bronchitis, guys. Wow. He, he was so sick that he couldn't get out of bed. So ill, in fact, that he his parents came and uh, took care of him for a few days. He said that was uh, it was kind of cool because my mom brought me homemade chicken noodle soup. But, um, you know, he said he would get out of bed for a little while, and then he'd get so sick he'd have to go right back and lay down again. So this wasn't your typical bronchitis that most of us have, and you don't think twice about it. A couple of days later, you're, you're right back at it. I mean, you lose 14 pounds in the, in the span of a week. Well, no wonder they put him on the deal. We'll see how his strength is today and how long they plan on using him. He is 2-0 and against the Indians in his career. He made one start in this ballpark. That was September 2nd, 2013. It was a win where he pitched seven innings. But uh, his numbers, uh, you might as well throw them out then because they don't look very good so far this year on the road. Does not have a win. He's 0-3 and an ERA over 11. Left-handed batters hitting over 400 against him. Pitch outside. 2-0 to David Murphy, who's 2-3 for three with a double in the series. Down low, three and one. Brandon Moss would be next. Fouled out of play. Sometimes when you're a, a, a bench player and you don't have a clearly defined role, it can be tough to go up there and be patient in and at bat. But I'm thinking with Rayburn and Murphy, knowing their roles, knowing how often they're going to be, it enables them to be a little more selective and maybe more patient than the average role player. Well, plus they know a lot of the pitchers in the, in the game as well. Off the plate, but a perfect hop right to Flaherty. And the Indians are out 1-2-3 here in the first. one nothing, Baltimore.
Baltimore as we go to the second inning. Here's our great clip of the game from yesterday. This is how it ended. With a strikeout of Matt Wieters. Chris Davis trying to go to second. Leon Gomes throws him out. And that is how the ball game came to an end yesterday as the Indians even the series up. Yeah, you don't see that too often. That's a tying run. Trying to advance in the scoring position, but did not work on the strikeout. Chris Davis takes a strike. One for six in the series, and he has struck out four times. Carlos Carrasco deals and a little tight as Davis spins out of the way. The 2 1. Low and away. Three balls and a strike. With Delman Young to follow. Swing and a miss in a full count. Good tailing fastball. Check it out on our Nissan pitch tracker. A fastball running away, 3-1. Good movement on that pitch. Ended up out of the strike zone, but Davis goes after it. Now the payoff pitch. He laid off that wow. one. Wow. Tried to throw the exact same pitch, and he laid off that one. He swung at the first one, 3-1. He lays off that one, and it's ball four. I'm sure Jason Kipnis is saying, now, wait a minute. Now, when I was up, that was strike three called. Here's Delman Young, one for four in the series. Sat out the opener, played yesterday. And takes a strike. Bounces foul, third base side. Just barely. That's what you're looking for, a ground ball to turn the double play. But this ball was not that far off being a fair ball. Look at it going down the line. Oh, by about a foot. Don't know if Chisholm would have got there because you don't expect Young to pull Carrasco like that. Down and away, one ball, two strikes. Bounced in front of the plate. Gomes kept it in front of him but couldn't locate it, and Davis alertly goes to second base on the wild pitch. He gets him this time. He, he picks it up where he realizes that he's not going to have a chance to get him. It was Davis that was thrown out yesterday to end the game on that almost same play. Swung out and missed. Carrasco strikes out Young, his second strikeout of the day. One down here in the second inning. Well, he gets Young to swing it. That ball is down out of the strike zone. Was not a strike. Might have been a changeup. Sure looked like it. 
coming out there, but he gets strikeout number two, out number one here in the second inning. Jimmy Paredes. Oh for 4 thus far in the series, takes ball one. Drives one to center field. Born on the move. Will make the catch. Well, get live Indians baseball all season long with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or your tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcasts, stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. That's a big out for Carrasco because Paredes is the last guy you want to see coming to the plate with runners in scoring position, leading the league with a 500 average in those instances. But he gets him to fly out, and with two down, J.J. Hardy, the batter. And a first pitch strike. Hardy is one for seven against the Indians so far with four strikeouts. Able to lay off that pitch low and away. Two balls and a strike. What a difference a year makes, huh? 3.05. Well, he didn't have a home run, but 15 ribbies. Now the 3-1. Up the middle, and Avila scoops it. Spins and throws and got him. Oh, a terrific play at shortstop by Mike Avila going up the middle to take a hit and an RBI away from J.J. Hardy.
Well, it's another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night. That'll all take place Friday, June 19th. The Rays are coming to town. Dogs are just a buck. Post-game fireworks to follow. That is presented by Wayside Furniture. Go to Indians.com for the ticket details. Brandon Moss going to lead it off for the Indians here in the second. Takes a look at a ball up high. Moss 0 for 6 in the series, but yesterday he was robbed of a home run by Mother Nature. Well, hit that same ball today if you can. If you can, we'll say it's over the trees. That would have been an insurance run for the Indians, make it 3-1 to at that time. But the way that wind was cool, blowing in, knocked it straight down. Two-one pitch outside. Andre, he wasn't too upset about that yesterday after the game, was he? Uh, a little bit. He didn't <laughs> want to talk to me. Let's put it that way. The other thing that he said to me, he goes, hey, we won the game. I'm not going to worry about it. But he goes, I've hit home runs where I haven't hit the ball nearly as well as I hit that ball yesterday. He couldn't believe the ball went, didn't go out. No, he didn't want to talk about it. Yeah, that's knowing the elements here in Cleveland. <laughs> it's going to take him a year to understand that. Just listen to this. Oh, we don't have the sound up. I mean, the sound it made, it was absolutely clobbered. And Adam Jones went right back to the wall. Nonchalantly. Listen. <laughs> that's that's a crack right there. And it stayed in the ballpark. Sometimes that's hard to believe. But, as he said, they won the game. Nick Swisher, the batter, takes outside. He ball didn't one. have to talk to Andre, and those are two good things. <laughs> well, this is an Indians offense that is starting to find some traction. They're fifth in the American League in batting average. They're sixth in runs scored, averaging just over four per game. Check swing foul. They're second in the league in doubles with 110. They lead the league in walks, averaging four a game. Moss is already aboard with a free pass. And when it comes to executing and scoring runs, not too bad when you lead a league and sacrifice flies. No, that's fine. I, I like all those stats, but they're second to last in, in leaving guys on base. They've left 420. I would rather see them get some key hits and with runners in scoring position than Agreed. those numbers. Agreed. I well, mean, and that comes and goes. But let's also look at it like at least you've got those opportunities. At least they're, you're getting well, guys on base. Yeah, so that you have to start stepping up, though. Two hits and a run batted in for Swisher yesterday. Also walked. And he strikes out here. Second K for Bud Norris. One away. Injury report brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk. Justin Verlander, a second rehab start last night, went five and two thirds. Only allowed the one run and struck out nine. Yasiel Puig, after missing 39 games, is back in action with the Dodgers. Lonnie Chisholm looks at a ball down low. Lonnie 0 for his last 10 at the dish. You know, we were mentioning when J.J. Hardy came to bat, and you said what a difference a year makes. For Lonnie Chisnall, a year ago on this date, he was batting 361. Yeah. 
Same number of homers, and the RBIs are similar, but for whatever reason, the batting average is a whole lot different. Chisholm all strikes out. Back-to-back -back Ks for Bud Norris. He stays away with something hard, and Chisholm Hall got a piece of it, I think, right into the glove of Weeders. So back-to-back -back strikeouts. That's three now for Bud Norris. And that'll bring up Jan Gomes. Gomes has four hits in the series, including a double. Now it looks like he's starting to find his stroke offensively. And there's another base hit for Gomes. Moss will stop at second base. And the two-out single keeps the inning rolling, and that is a really good sign for this Indians offense. Well, Jan Gomes, as we said, he's, been, he's starting to pick it up. He's getting a little more aggressive going into that batter's box and not as patient. He's getting a better feel at the plate, maybe picking up the ball a little bit better. So that's five hits in the last three games, and that's nice to see. And here is Michael Bourne. With two on and two out on the second, and the Indians down one nothing. Pitch outside, ball one. Most of Michael's success this year offensively has come at home, where he's batting 300 with nine of his 14 runs batted in. He's been able to make that pitch early into this game, that fastball away to the left-handers. The 1-1. And a foul right back. And a count, one ball, two strikes. Moss at second, Gomes at first. And the one two pitch. Strike three called. Four strikeouts for Bud Norris in the first two innings. Indians strand a pair. One nothing, Baltimore after two. World Series team that will take place on Saturday, June 20th. And the first 12,500 fans will receive a GV Art and Design T-shirt.
which is courtesy of Pepsi. Also be a post-game fireworks presented by CarMax. Get your tickets at Indians.com. Ryan Flaherty takes a pitch outside for ball one. Flaherty, two out of six in the series. And Carrasco gets that outside corner call to strike to even it up. Big bouncer to first. Santana will flip it. And that is out number one. Manny Machado coming to the plate. As we take a look at our player profile brought to you by Levin Furniture. Machado first overall pick by Baltimore. He was essentially raised by his mom. His parents were divorced when he was very young. He rarely spoke or saw his father, but his grandfather, Francisco Nunez, was a very important influence in his young life. And if you watch Machado closely before every ball game, when he goes out defensively, he'll write the initials FN, Francisco Nunez, on the infield dirt just before the outfield grass. There's nice. A bunt. That's beautiful. Carrasco tried to make a play, but it was such a perfect blunt, they had no chance to get him. Well, it really was. I mean, he deadened that ball. He put it close to the line. That is an absolute perfect bunt. He waits. He puts the ball down and then takes off. And Chisenhall certainly had no chance because he was way back. The only one with a play is Carrasco, and he's a good enough athlete to even come close to making it anywhere near a play. That was just a perfect bunt. Third time this year, Machado has laid down a bunt for a single this year. And he's aboard with one out here in the third for Travis Snyder, who struck out his first time up. Carrasco tosses one to first close play. Machado just did get back. You know, by all accounts, everybody you talk to seems to really like Manny Machado, especially guys that play with him, a great personality, good teammate, plays the game hard, plays it with a lot of enthusiasm and energy, which makes what happened a year ago so bizarre. Remember that? With Oakland? Yeah. It was just a sort of a bizarre couple of days there. He didn't like the tag play with Josh Donaldson at third. Remember, they sort of got into it, and then there was uh, an incident, I think, where somebody threw at him, and he, I think he chucked a bat. I, I don't remember. It was a benches clearing incident, and he was sort of in the eye of the hurricane that whole time. Well, he probably should have been. You know who you should talk to? We should talk to Moss about that. He was on the uh, Oakland team and see, yeah. see exactly what happened. But 1-1 one, one pitch. I mean, I remember it at the time. Eight up Chisholm, and everybody's safe. Machado to second, Snyder aboard on the air. That had a great chance to be an inning-ending double yeah. play, but it was a weird-looking hop. And as you take a look, watch how Chisinau tries to aggressively charge it and then kind of pulls back. Yeah. Yeah, I did, he did. and He got a tough hop. He created the tough hop, I think, by himself there. 
as that ball jumps up, and he was coming in on it and just couldn't field it cleanly. He thought it was in his glove, so that double play goes awry. You at least get one. Now it's first and second. They've been playing good defense, only their second error in their last, what is it, 11 games. So we'll see if uh, Carrasco can pick up his defense here. Yeah, now he's got to deal with Adam Jones, who homered to the bleachers and left his first time up. Second time he's done that in the series. High fly ball. Deep center. Back is Bourne. Looked like he was signaling for a fair catch. Made it on the middle of the warning track. Tagging and going to third is Machado, and now there are two down. I think he was trying to Block that sun. Even though it's all cloud cover, but it's right. still bright. Well, he has shades on, but you look up, and maybe that sun was just peeking through one of those clouds that he was looking at just to keep the glare out of there. He knew he had room, so just catch the ball and then get it in as quickly as possible. So at least that guy from first didn't tag up and go to second. So now they get two outs and Carrasco a chance to get out of the inning. And Matt Weeders will be the batter. He grounded out his first time up. Swung on and missed. The old one pitch. I hate to always keep going back to the, the old days, but I was watching that first swing by Weeders where he swung and missed and off balance kind of walked across the plate. Was it true that in your day, if you swung that hard and missed at a pitch, that the next one real good chance it'd be up under your chin? I don't know. Or is that know. kind of overblown? Yeah, I think it's overblown. Uh, it's not like he tried to hit it nine miles. and No, I, I, I don't think so. Right back to the mound. Carrasco has it. And he'll flip it to first to end the inning. Good job. He works out of some trouble. Orioles strand a pair. one nothing Baltimore, middle of the third. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Bill Schnack enjoying a cold one with us here in the booth uh, yes today. Yes, he is. His cold one isn't a Miller Lite, <laughs> but it's cold. Yes, it is. Love the shorts he has on today.
Mike Avila is to lead off for Cleveland. Mike was busy before the ball game today. Took the the barber shears to Indians owner Paul Dolan. <laughs> Paul Dolan agreeing to have his head shaved in a show of support for the, the players on the team and you know, they'll all shave their heads to show their support for Mike as his daughter battles leukemia. One one pitch popped him up on the infield. JJ Hardy, the shortstop. Makes the catch. Let's go down to Andre, who has more on the, the head shaving before the game. Yeah, that was a really cool moment. And even talking to Tito Francona about it, he goes, I'm not surprised at all that Paul Dolan would do something like that. He goes, that's the type of guy he is. He's unassuming, and he makes everybody else feel comfortable with him. The only caveat to this is that Tito says he now wants Chris Antonetti and Mark Shapiro to sit down and show true team unity. I don't know <laughs> if that's going to happen, but that's what he wants. But it really was a cool moment. It says so much about this organization. Well, and Mike Avilas was really, he said, I was blown away when Paul Dolan, uh, you know, came to him and said, I want to do it. I want to be part of this as well. And he said, I can't imagine how many other owners in professional sports would agree to come down and have their heads yeah, shaved yeah. to be part of the guys. But uh, he was really moved by his show of support. Jason Kipnis called out on strikes his first time up, and it's a one ball, one strike count. And a foul right back to the screen. Now the 2-2, and he strikes him out swinging. Five Ks for Bud Norris. This is not the same Bud Norris that Baltimore saw earlier in the year. Stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Consecutive games with one extra base hit at least. Indians have done it 54 straight. Wow, that is amazing. By far ahead of everybody else. First time through the order, one hit, a single, and one walk. Going through it now, second time around, Carlos Santana, who grounded out in the first inning. Leads the league with 43 walks this year. <laughs> well, trying to take a page from Marquise yeah. Grissom's book, who said, hey, if you're going to give me that shift, I'll take that hit. But look, there's two outs. You know, the timing of this thing. You've got somebody on deck. And, and and he swings the bat. If you're going to bunt it, bunt it. And you push it hard. You don't go and then try and swing it. <laughs> I mean, that defeats a person. Hit a double. Well, and you're right, too, with two outs. Hit a double. If you're going to get on first base, you have to steal uh -huh. second base to get yourself in scoring position. So you're better off swinging away. With the shift, it'll be a long throw for Flaherty. No problem. Indians go one, two, three. After three, it remains Baltimore one, Cleveland nothing.
Here's our Lowe's Never Stop Improving note. Sixth time in Danny Salazar's career. He's punched out 10 in a game, fourth time this year. Well, he was, uh, he's been something since being called back to the big leagues. That splitter has made a difference for him. Good pitch inside. A little comeback fastball on the inside part of the plate. You see, where Gomes, he's not sitting in off mm -hmm. the plate. He's sitting middle, and you start that ball inside, and it comes back. That was uh, well done. And it looks like he's had good movement on that pitch today because if you remember with Davis the last time, the 3-1 pitch he swung at, he was able to take the 3-2 pitch was the exact same pitch, and it was a ball. That's got good movement today. Swung at that one to stay alive. Though I'm not sure this would have been a strike. You know, but when this guy's proven to you he can throw it out there, you'll get swings, especially when uh, he's ahead in the count. Hitter has to protect. Carrasco, just over 50 pitches on the afternoon. Now, Carrasco for the second time through, he's had 14 pitches and 11 strikes. I like that more efficient because he doesn't have a strikeout, but that will enable him to get deeper yeah, into the game. That's, yes, contact, in play, get outs early. Punched toward left in the gap, and a running catch by Michael Bourne. Murphy was going behind him. Bourne dove in front of him to make the catch for out number one. A terrific defensive play by Bourne to keep Davis well, off the base. That's the way you do it, man. The center fielder is, is the captain. He goes over. If he thinks he can catch it, he can. And watch Murphy back him up. And Murph made a dive for it, too, thinking that he might have a chance if Bourne doesn't catch it. But that's really good communication there. Murphy going behind him to back up. Bourne going for it. And he makes a really nice play. Now Delman Young struck out his only time up in the second inning. And a good off-speed pitch in there for strike one. Picked it out of the dirt. Young struck out his first time up. Guy who is an aggressive swinger at the plate. He doesn't like to watch. Swung at that one and fouled it off. And it's not like it's not like he doesn't have a good eye at the plate. He's not going to swing at a ball that is in the other batter's box necessarily or chase no, a lot. He, but he can just manipulate and get the barrel to the ball in a lot of different instances. He searches for that first fastball, and he's not afraid to swing at it. And there's nothing wrong. That's just his style. People have different styles. He's not a guy that goes up there and works the count. If he sees something he can put the bat to, he gets after it. But he chased one here, and Carrasco strikes him out for the second time today. Well, that play to start the inning where Bourne's coming over. See Murphy going back to back up now. He knows that Bourne's going to have a chance at it. And Murph is going to go behind him to try and back him up. But Bourne makes a beautiful catch on the play, takes extra base hit away from Davis, and that center fielder should always be aggressive. Go after the ball if you think you can catch it and let your wingmen back you up. Now, the way Murphy went after the ball 
that would appear to me that maybe he didn't hear Bourne calling for it. Is that why he dives? If you're backing up, you're backing up on your feet, well, right? Well, that's a, a tweener. You don't know if he's going to catch that ball, but he knows one thing. He's he's going for the ball, so he's going to back him up regardless. So he wasn't sure he was going to catch it. He was. He knew he would have had to dive for it also. So go ahead and make a dive on it, and it just so happened Bourne caught it. That was, a, that was a good play, though, watching the outfielders mm-hmm. work, going behind them and at least backing them up. Just a tweener, one of those tough plays. Ground ball to first, gets by Santana. Hard hit ball by Jimmy Paredes. His first hit in the series. The Orioles have a two-out base runner now for J.J. Hardy. Golf Zone with Jimmy Hanlon tonight. We'll take your calls about the Memorial in Dublin. 8 o'clock right here on Sports Time Ohio. Jimmy was at the ball game yesterday. Had a chance to talk with him after the ball game. J.J. Hardy takes a strike. Now the pitch, swing and a miss. And it's quickly 0-2. Crowded leaderboard down there at the Memorial. Justin Rose will tee off with the lead. But you got at least 10 guys that are within four or five shots. Carrasco's 0-2 pitch. One hopper in the center field. And Paredes will have to stop at second base. So back-to-back two-out hits. Yeah, an 0-2 pitch there that uh, a breaking ball that Carlos left up in the zone, and he paid the price for it. Sort of helped out Hardy right here. You see that breaking ball? Too much of the plate when you're uh, ahead in the count. So they keep the inning going with back-to-back singles now. Ryan Flaherty grounded out in the third. Out of play. Nice catch. Nice catch up in the loge. Leisurely Sunday afternoon. Gets to give it to his young son. Nicely done. Just don't throw it back on on the field. (laughs) Look at him. Wave. Wave. There you go. There's the boy. He's got it. There you wave. He's got a souvenir going home with it. What a great day at the ballpark. Blocked by Gomes. Gets away momentarily, but Paredes holds it second. And a foul in and out of the glove. Beyond Gomes. Again, Carrasco in a very good count. One and two. That ball running away caught him right on the heel. At the crease of that glove, and that hurt the hand there. You can see him getting a feel for it. one nothing Baltimore, but they've got two on and two out here in the fourth. Carrasco with a 1-2 pitch. And Flaherty fouls it up the first base side.
Carlos has not had a 1-2-3 inning. And the Orioles, if anything, have they've made him work. Yep. Pitch count climbing. Upstairs with it, two and two. Just off the plate. And now full count. Well, they'll get a head start out on the bases. The runners are off, and it's ball four. The bases are loaded, and Manny Machado will be the hitter. Second walk issued by Carrasco. We'll see if uh, Mickey Calloway comes out and has anything to say because, you know, he had the first two outs in this inning, and then you get a couple of two-out base hits, and then he walks a nine-hitter. So 7-8-9 has set the table with two outs to roll it over for the third time. So Calloway wants to come out and have a little chat with Carlos. Scramble time in the bullpen. Carrasco's just at 71 pitches on the day, but as we pointed out, hasn't had a 1 2 3 inning. And the Orioles have put up a pretty good fight, even though they have just the one run so far. But a key moment, because the Indians only have one hit through the first three frames. Well, you look at the, the pitches by inning. He had only 12 in that uh, third inning, even though they had the base hit and an error to extend the inning. But this is the, He's going to have to work out of this one. Mark Sipchinski getting loose. He had 11 pitches after his first two outs in this inning, and the next three have reached. First ball swing, chopped. Chisel, bare hand grab, and he can't come up with the ball. And everybody's safe, 2 0 Baltimore. You know, that's going to go as a base hit, infield hit. I, I'm, I want to see it again because I thought Chisel may have had time to use his glove on this play as opposed to going with the bare hand. I could be wrong. I didn't see him, but that's a tough play. So it stays on the infield. Goes as a base hit, and Baltimore comes back. Four have reached with two outs here in the fourth inning. And now Travis Snyder. Swing and a miss. And it count is quickly 0 and 2. Foul just past Wayne Kirby. Snyder struck out swinging in the first. Reached on an error in the third. Well, 
This is going to be the 30th pitch of this fourth inning for Carrasco. Punched into center field for a base hit. Scoring is Hardy. Flaherty coming home. Here's the throw, and he's safe too. Five straight Orioles have reached here in the fourth with two outs. And Snyder with a big two-out, two-run single. Yeah, it's now four to nothing, Baltimore. Served it out there, and I mean that was a good pitch. That was that two-seam fastball going down and away, and that's all he could do with that pitch. Bourne comes in with a good throw, but with two outs, Flaherty off and running. That throw just a little up the line. You see where Gomes has to go out in front. He's got to go get it and come back to try and tag him, and Flaherty scores. So that's another two RBI single, makes it a 4 nothing ball game. And, boy, this fourth inning, he went from two outs and nobody on to five straight reaching. And that started with the bottom part of the lineup, 7, 8, and 9. Baltimore today, 5 for 8, two outs today. Two out well, hitting. it goes to putting the bat on the ball, putting the ball in play. Sometimes good things happen when well, you don't that strike was a out. Good, that was a good pitch. I got to say, that ball was down. It was away. It was for a ball. But Snyder just protecting, and he was able to get to the barrel to the ball. This one's popped to sh- uh, first base, and Santana will make the catch to end the inning. Eight come to the plate. Three score. Baltimore four, Cleveland nothing. Carlos Gomez, one with a four for four yesterday. I guess he likes to play against the Twins, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Spent some time in Minnesota, always against your former team. But J.J. Hardy there. Yeah, and that was the only time Hardy played in Minnesota, just briefly. Well, offensively, the Indians got to get rolling. Now their second time through the lineup. They're down four here in the bottom half of the fourth to a guy that uh, is one and four on the year. Just his last start, May 10th, against the Yankees. But Norris is uh, coming into this game, giving up 38 hits and 27 in the third innings, and has only given up one to the Indians until now. Murphy rips a double down in the right field corner. Indians get their leadoff man aboard here in the fourth. As Murphy has his eighth two-bagger of the year. There you go. There's the start. It looked like Murph picked out a, a pitch. It might have been a changeup upstairs. There it was. 
Speeds up his bat, drilled it down into the corner. His eighth double this year. So there's your start to an inning. Brandon Moss walked his only time up. Back in the fourth. And he checks on a ball up high. Orioles with a three-man shift right side. Flaherty, the second baseman, way out on the outfield grass. Hit hard and fair down the right field line. This will go all the way into the corner. Murphy will score. Moss into second base with an RBI double. It's back-to-back two baggers for the Tribe here in the fourth. They're on the board, down 4-1. to one. Well, that didn't take long, did it? That one went right over the bag. Norris looked over... Th- praying it was foul it was not this is gonna be our mcdonald's i'm loving it he got a breaking ball so a change up and a breaking ball now this time around and both lefties take it down into the right field corner this one over the bag so murphy scores easily they've already answered it and a chance to do some more damage nick swisher Struck out his first time up. Swings and misses at the fastball. Checks on the ball up and away. Norris, the first time through the lineup this year. Hitters are hitting 298. The second time, 422. They're now two for four. Going through the second time. Now the 1 1. Missed outside. The 2 1 pitch swung out and missed. He's shaking his head right there. Don't know if he chased uh, out of the zone. Yeah, he did. Chased ball three. And now he knows it, telling himself, come on, be patient, relax. Pressure's on him. And the 2 2. Inside oh, almost hit him. If I it, think did, it did, it did. Got him on the back foot, I believe. Yes, it did. And Swisher will take his base. Well, there's uh, did him a favor right there. Swisher up, hobbling the first base. He'll be fine. Take a look. I thought it hit him on the foot. It might have caught him on the knee. No, too low for the knee. Yeah, got him on the shin. Yeah, just above the ankle on the front foot, it looked like. Above the ankle. Shin, shin burner. Trying to get away. Couldn't get out of the way, but the Indians will have a runner now. First and second. He's okay. Swisher will stay in there. I think, look, I I think with Terry Francona and James Quinlan, their concern isn't him getting hit by the pitch, but the impact it has on the knees when you've got to go to a full-out sprawl and go to the deck quickly like that. I'll make sure that he's okay, and he appears to be fine. So two on, nobody out. Lonnie Chisenhall to the plate. Chisenhall struck out his first time up. And a foul right back. (laughs) 
Close pitch, taken pretty, for a ball. Yeah, that's a pretty good pitch. He caught a break. Pretty good pitch right there. It's down. It's at the knees. He was getting that pitch earlier in the game. Didn't get it there. So it's 1-1 to Chiz. Checks on another close one, but that's up and away. Two balls and a strike. The Indians are on the board as they try to answer the three-run top half of the inning by the Birds. A concerned Buck Showalter pops a few sunflower seeds. It's going to be a big pitch right here. And it's fouled off to the left. But Norris ready with the 2-2. Spence throws to second. They got him picked. No, Moss called safe. He must have missed the tag. Holy smokes. They had him dead to rights, and they're saying he did miss the tag. Wow. Greg Gibson on the call. He was, they're you talking about a daylight the play. There they're, was all kind of daylight. Look, at he has the ball before he's three feet, five feet to the bag. Now they're going to look at it on their replay, and I'll tell you I don't what. Think he ever tagged him. Uh, Bud, uh, Buck's looking in there, and they're waiting for him, as a matter of fact, to come out because he is dead to rights. If there, oh. he got the top of the hand, how can't you challenge that anyway? I don't care how close it is, I would still have to challenge that. No because the ball yet beat by Showalter. Looked like it got the top of his hand there, didn't it? Tough to tell. But. He does down not. For the moment. He does stand down. Oh, wait, he does. Yeah, he wants it. He says, go get the headsets on. I want a challenge. You have to. Even if you lose your challenge, that's too close. And it's at a really big part of this ball game. Holy smokes. I don't know if he caught him flat-footed or what happened. But that the, the daylight play, the door closed on Moss in a hurry. Now, the question will be, did that glove catch the top of Moss's hand? Well, from our looks, I don't know. I mean, we've seen it enough this year. We're going to wait and let them make their call. But, boy, oh, boy, the ball certainly beat him. There's another look. He was called safe at second. But, look, he's out by five feet. Does Hardy apply the tag? It looks like he gets his hand there. I don't know. Yeah. Well, On that angle, it appears that he grazes the top of his hand, I think. Yeah, that's it's, it's that close that I would think you have to take a chance, even if it, uh, it doesn't get overturned. If it does, it's a huge out. It's the first out of the inning is what it is, and that would be a runner in scoring position. So they're going to let Norris throw. They'll move out of the way. And, I mean, they're looking at the play up on the scoreboard and everything. I mean, not that that means anything. They're in New York dealing with it now. Whole lot of standing around and waiting at this point. Well, it's and out it's of their not hands. A, and it's not a cut-and-dry play for the replay official either. I mean, it's... You know, it was funny because everybody on the field was just looking into their dugout, waiting for him to come out and, and at least challenge it. And finally, he says, put the headsets on. I want it, to, I want it challenged. Jim Joyce, the crew chief on your left, is going to let us know well, what the call go. is. Let's take a peek. Safe is the call. What a break for the Indians and Brandon Moss. So I think this is going to go as the call stands. Yeah. That'd be my guess. We'll wait to, for the official confirmation. It stands because it's just, I think it was going to be too difficult to tell with complete certainty if, in fact, the glove 
Well, we could look at it all day and come up with it, you know, say, hey, he did graze it. He didn't graze it. He got in there. Well, he is safe, and it's a break for the Indians. Whew. Now can Chisinau take advantage of that break? 2-2 pitch. Strikes him out. Boy, what a tough day for Chisholm. That's the sixth strikeout now for Bud Norris. It'll bring up Jan Gomes, who singled his first time up, and he's five for nine in the series. Outside, ball one. Gomes takes it's outside again. Two and oh. Breaking ball. that one is in for a strike. Yeah, he's geared fastball. He hit the got a base hit on the fastball and first pitch his first at bat. So 2-0. You know he's looking fastball. Norris comes back with the breaking ball and threw it in a nice spot to get into the strike zone. So it's a 2-1 count now. But as a hitter, you spit on it. Not what you're looking for. Down and in. You're going to get another nice spot here. 3-1. You got a 2 0 breaking ball. Would you sit 3 1 breaking ball here? I don't know. It depends on what Gomes wants to hit. I'd say search the fastball. Take that. That's okay. He made a good pitch with it two times in a row 2 0 and 3 1. You still have a, a big strike left, and you got a good look at it both times. You know what I'm saying? That's a pretty good spot. That's not something you want to go swing at, but now you've had a look at it at least twice if he throws it again. And a full count for Gomes. And with two on and one out, the payoff pitch. Hit fouled on the left See, side. As hitters, you search fastball. And he still got one on a 3-2 pitch. It was inside. He just fouled it off. Now let's see if Norris comes back with that slider again. And Gomes can shoot it to right field if he throws it. Because he had a look at it already. Because he, he already... Sees that Gomes wants to hit that fastball. Payoff pitch. Right field slicing foul. Stayed uh, inside with another fastball, and Gomes tried to hit it the other way. Coming back inside, they want it away. He missed his target inside, but that's a pretty good swing because that protection keeps you on the slider as well when you fight the fastball off, so that's not a bad approach. Three two pitch. Swings and misses, strikes him out. He didn't Seven mess around. For he Bud came right back with another fastball. These hitters haven't been able to catch up to to the fastball in Norris. He's throwing 93-94. That's all he threw Chisholm was fastballs. He couldn't uh, catch up. And with Gomes, a couple good counts to hit in, he throws the fastball by him as well. Michael Bourne called out on strikes 
to end the second inning with two on. Here he is again with two on and two out. Indians started the inning with back to back doubles. And then Nick Swisher was hit by a pitch, and it was all set up for a rally. But after back to back strikeouts. See, there he's getting that pitch. He stayed out there. Now, there was a pitch earlier in this at bat. I'm trying to think of who it was, too, that it was down and away. It just missed, and it was called a ball. But that's been the same spot he's been throwing at all day long. He has been able to throw that pitch from inning one. Up and away. Two on, two out, one, two pitch from Norris. Weekly tap to short, and the inning is over. Indians get on the board. They trail it 4-1 after four. Your Northern Ohio Honda dealers by the Cleveland Clinic. Call for an appointment today. And by the game changing all new Ford F 150. The future is tough. Welcome back. Heading into the top half of the fifth inning. The Orioles lead it four to one. Good opportunity for the Indians last inning. They had it rolling. They did get on the board, though, and answered a three spot. Put on by Baltimore in the top half of the fourth, and that all came with two outs. They had five straight guys reach base and put three runs on the board. It's going to be Weeters, Davis, and Young due to face Carrasco here. Misses with a breaking ball. Weeters today grounded to second and just bounced back to Carrasco. So he is 0 for 2. His first start this year coming on Friday. And he means a lot to this ball club. Will be a free agent at the end of the year. Coming off of Tommy John surgery. But means a lot to this Baltimore Oriole club as a veteran and a leader. So Carrasco behind 2-0. and oh. Good fastball he throws by him. Carrasco last inning. And we got time out because here comes Terry Francona out of the dugout. I don't know if anything was wrong with Carrasco, but now a trainer coming out. He's bringing the umpire out. 
Carrasco looks and says, I, I'm fine. What are you doing? He looks like he's surprised. They must have had a conversation in between innings. He says he's fine. That is no visit to the mound. Let's let's check him out after the pitch. Not much there. Maybe a little. See, he just looks like he's stretching something out right there. And then out come Francona. I don't, I didn't see much. But they are keeping an eye on him. Obviously, he might have told somebody, a trainer, that something was going on. Well, fastball, that misses. He's behind three and one. Carrasco now at 82 pitches. Callaway looking on. They had the bullpen up, and he hits a drive to right field over the head of Moss. It's going to stay in the ballpark off the wall. It'll be a double for Weeters uh, by the time they... Oh, he's going to third base. And hustles in, and he is safe. I did not see what happened. It looked like he was pulling up at second base. And then he continues to go to third base. Did Moss bobble that ball? It was an automatic double because he hit it off the base of the wall in right field. 3-1 3-1 count, a low fastball. Weeters gets on top of it. It had top spin. Now, watch the ball come back past Moss. He was pulling up at second base. Did Moss overrun this? No. He just hustled his way into third base. That's going to be a triple. I think Moss thought he was going to stop at second base. And look at Weeters. Took a second peek. That's good hustle by the catcher who's not all that fast of a runner to get himself into third base. It goes as a triple. And that's a little lackadaisical in the outfield for me. But that triple is going to be it for Carlos Carrasco. We'll take our Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. It looks like it's Nick Hagedon coming on. So Carrasco, four-plus innings. He is off. That was a, a weird inning right there. Haggard on the new pitcher now for the Indians in field in with leaders at third. Chris Davis takes ball one. Haggard on on for the 27th time this year. No wins, a loss. The RA 372. And the Indians already down four to one. There's a high fly ball to right well, field. Plenty deep enough as Moss sure backs is. up. And makes the catch. Weeders will tag and come home. That makes that play out in right field that much bigger now. That leadoff double probably would have got him over to third base. But if you look at it, 
When you see Moss coming in, he kept his head down. And this two box, watch where Wieters makes the decision. When he sees Moss's head down, he starts back up and goes to third base. He puts his head down, and there he comes. As soon as he saw put his head down, he wasn't paying attention. He hustled his way into third. That was an easy run right there for Baltimore. Good heads-up play. Well, Weeders looked like he was pulling up going into second base, too. I'm not sure he who deked who. No, Weeders deked him. He, Moss looked down to pick up the ball, and as soon as he did, that's when Weeders went to third base. That's what I'm saying. When it, Once you put your head down, you can't expect him to stop at second. You've got to get it and get it in. So they uh, pick up that run that the Indians put on the board right here in two hitters. Swing and a miss by Delman Young. Right back up the middle, and that's through. Delman Young has his first hit of the day. Well, let's take another look, Matt. Here you go. See, he, he looked twice. He never. He was going to pull up, and he deked me because I was saying, okay, that's going to be a double. But by the time uh, it's all said and done, he ends up at third base, and a fly ball scores a run. Hit foul and hard just past the dugout. Jimmy Paredes is one for two with a single and a run scored. You do have to wonder if it was simply a case of Carrasco being ineffective today or if there was something else bothering him because when Terry Francona went out before Weeders crushed that uh, triple, right? Yeah. It was during the at-bat. He went out during the at-bat. You wonder... Well, with the trainer in tow, they thought we saw it showed something on his hand where he might have been stretching something. I don't know. It was hard to tell. It didn't no. look like much was happening. But in between innings, he might have told a trainer or something. They say keep an eye on him. Yeah. And, and Francona came right out. He had a two zero count and then a three one count. So I, you're, I'm not sure. One one pitch, all the way to the backstop. Down to second goes Delman Young. Second wild pitch of the day by Indians pitching. You'll see this fastball just going down. You don't expect it. Down in the dirt. That's where breaking balls come in to die. Not the fastballs. Usually the fastballs stay up. Hit hard to third. Chisenhall looks the runner back and throws him out. Two down. Well, grab some friends and catch a game at the new corner bar. It's open to all fans at Progressive Field. It's a $13 district ticket. It's presented by Sports Time Ohio, and they are going quickly, so get yours today. Tickets available only at indians.com slash district ticket. Right now, Baltimore with a 5-1 lead. Runner at second, two down, and J.J. Hardy the batter. And a strike call over the outside edge.
Blown away. Two balls and a strike. And Nick having a hard time locating the fastball. 12 pitches. It's 6 and 6. Six balls, six strikes. This is one pitch he should always be able to command as the fastball because if he can throw that curveball, is what makes him extra tough. But it all stems off of that number one. Off the glove of Gomes to the backstop again, and down to third goes Delman Young. Well, he gets to third on a wild pitch, and now a pass ball. See, his fastball is all over the place. He spikes one in the dirt. He's throwing. That was catchable. That's just above the mask of Gomes, but it goes off the glove. And a 3-1 pitch is out of play to the right. Well, back out of play. Ryan Webb warming up for Cleveland right now. Well, if you're Hardy, you got to be looking one pitch. That fastball, he fouled that one off. Breaking ball. Good Shot pitch. Shot to third. And Lonnie Chisinau will throw him out. But the Orioles answer back with another run. Middle of the fifth, 5-1 Baltimore. Baltimore on top as we roll to the home half of the fifth. Mike Avilas in the top of the order for Cleveland. Well, the offense has to kick it in gear now. Had a good start to last inning with the back-to-back doubles to get on the board, but they just could not add on from that point. Ball one, it's outside. One on one account.
Avila's in the hole one and two as he leads off the bottom of the fifth here for the Tribe. Chopped up the middle, cutting it off the shortstop, Hardy. One down. Well, you go back to the fourth inning, you get the leadoff double by Murphy, and then Moss comes down and he hits one down the line. All right, first two hitters, and then this is really what slowed the tempo down. They, they, they challenged the call. He was called safe. Chisenhall goes down on a strikeout fastball. Gomes goes down. He had the count in his favor, and Bourne hits a little weak grounder. They step on second end of the inning. So they were able to get one on the board. But then Baltimore came back and got that run back on him in the top half of the fifth. Jason Kipnis 0 for 2 has struck out both times today. Hits this one in deep center field. Jones racing back. He won't get it. One hops the wall. And into second base with a one-out double is Jason Kipnis. Yeah. That's his 17th double of the year. He started the day fifth in the league in doubles. Well, I'll tell you, he made an adjustment. He catches a breaking ball, and he drives it to left center field over the head of Andre, or Adam Jones. And short hops the wall, so makes the adjustment. Every double that they had. The Murphy was a changeup. Moss was a breaking ball, and so was Kipnis. All right, here is Carlos Santana. 0 for 2 today. Just one out of seven in the series. Popped up, foul, and out of play. Jason's now hit an 18 straight here at home. Closing in on Michael Brantley's 19 game streak of a year ago. Now we'll have a chance to equal that Tuesday night here against Seattle. And the 0 1. Antenna looked like he grabbed at his back after that swing and miss. A couple of deep back bends to try to loosen it up. To left field, but playable for Snyder, who makes the catch, and Kipnis will have to hold at second, two down. Coming up later tonight on Fox Sports Ohio, it's Cavaliers live before and after game two of the NBA Finals. Jeff and Campy will preview from the watch party at the queue starting at 7. Then Fred, AC, and Allie will be in Oakland with postgame coverage. It's Cavaliers live tonight only on Fox Sports Ohio. Don't forget to put Gary's name on there. What's Gary doing? He's over there too. The watch party. He's doing a lot of watching. David Murphy doubled and scored in the fourth. Tommy Bo going to keep numbers at the watch party? No, I think Bo's got a, he's got a date later tonight. He's going down to Belton Village. <laughs> now the 1-0 to Murphy. Down low, two balls, no strikes. Weeder's going to go talk it over with Norris. Well, he hit a changeup in his last at-bat. Pulled it down the line. Well, Weeder's going to 
quick chat. Even though, you know, first base is open, you just want to make a quality pitch here if you're Norris. This is his first start since uh, May 10th, so he's been off a month. You never know it. No, you're right. He's walked one, struck out seven. That's been his pitch today. That fastball he's been able to locate to the left-handers down and away. And I mentioned it to you earlier. Left-handers are hitting 421 coming into this game off from today. Kipnis has a hit. Murphy has a hit. Moss as left-handers. So three of the four hits have come off the bats of left-handers. That is called a strike. It's three and one. David Murphy already has three hits in the series and five at bats awaiting a 3-1 pitch here. And it's ball four. So now two on, two out, and Brandon Moss coming to the plate. Boy, would a three-pointer look nice right here. I was going to say a big fly would, look, would be pretty. Look, Showalter looks at the book. Still nobody throwing in Baltimore's bullpen as Norris is just over 80 pitches on the day. Popped him up. This might be playable. Machado. Yes, it is. Down the line, makes the catch, and the inning is over. Indian Strand, two more after 5, 5-1 five, Baltimore. Just $10 for kids 12 and under with the purchase of an adult ticket. Kids tickets located in the new family deck here at Progressive Field. You can log on to Indians.com. New pitcher on for Cleveland, Ryan Webb. Ryan Flaherty grounded out in the third inning, walked and scored in the fourth. That was the disaster inning for the Cleveland on both sides, top and bottom. There were two outs, nobody on base, and Carlos Carrasco couldn't get out of the inning. Five straight reached as Baltimore scored three times. 
And then on the bottom half, the Indians started out with back-to-back doubles, and we showed you what happened after that. Well, in that fourth inning, Carrasco had 31 pitches. 11 pitches, he had the first two outs. And then the bottom part of the lineup did the damage. Hardy, 0-2 base hit. Flaherty had a 1-2 walk. And then Snyder got the base hit to drive in a pair on a very good pitch, but it was on the fifth pitch of the at-bat. Two balls, one strike. Fouled back. And the count is two and two. Swung on and missed. Strikes him out. One down. This is the in-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Adam Jones started it in the first with his second home run of the series. And then in that goofy fourth inning, Bird scored three more to make it four to nothing. Indians only run came on the Brandon Moss RBI double in the fourth. But Baltimore quickly answered that back in the fifth. Manny Machado has two hits today. And neither one has left the infield. And when I say infield, I mean the grass. He had a bunt single in the third and a little topper that rolled maybe 45 feet toward third base, but that was a key play in the inning because had Lonnie Chisnell been able to make the play, the inning's over, but he couldn't come up with it cleanly. Try to go to a bare hand grab. You said maybe he had a chance to go to the glove, but it was hard to tell. I couldn't see how far down the line he was. Here you get a look at this play again. It's It's a tough play. You're playing back, and you've got to get to that ball as quickly as possible. And You know, it's an awful tough play barehanded. Maybe that was the only one he felt he had. Obviously, it was, or he wouldn't go for it. But sometimes it's easier to make it with your glove, even if he's going to be safe. One way or the other, though, just a tough play. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back strikeouts for Ryan Webb. Two down in the inning. This guy is a really good sinker. He's the sinker slider pitcher, but he has excellent movement on that sinker. He gets Machado to swing over the top of it, and it's back-to-back strikeouts for Webb. And it brings up Travis Snyder, who had the big blow in the fourth inning when he drove in a pair. Liner. Oh, what a backhanded pick by Mike Avilas, and he throws him out. The Orioles go one, two, three.
Baltimore leading it by a score of 5-1 to one as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. No Michael Brantley in the lineup today. Let's go down to Andre. He's been not in and out of the lineup, Dre, but he, you know, they've had him DHing and, yeah. and trying to keep him upright. What's the latest there? Tito Francona is trying to take care of Michael Brantley at the end of the day. He wasn't in favor of it. He wanted to play. He didn't like DHing a couple nights ago. But right now, Terry Francona says the best thing for Michael Brantley is to have the day off, have the day off tomorrow and get back at it on Tuesday. They're just trying to take care of him. They won't talk about the back injury, but obviously he had the injury coming out of spring training, and it bothered him. He's played. He's learned how to kind of deal with the injury. And at this point in time, Terry Francona says, look, Michael Brantley won't come to me and tell me how he feels. I've got to do my job and take care of him the best way I know how. Yeah. There you go. Well, as we've said before, for Terry, it's a case of I'd rather not play him for a day then lose him for a week because of maybe run him into the ground. And this works out perfectly when you've got a game followed by an off day, the chance to give a player two days off in a row, well, which can do the body a lot of good, can it? Yeah, it can when you're an everyday guy. And he, we still may see him today in a pinch hitting appearance. Nick Swisher grounds out one away. And it brings up Lonnie Chisenhall. Up and away. Chaz Rowe, a twenty eight year old right hander. Was originally a 32nd round pick of the Rockies back in 05. Drafted out of Lafayette High School in Lexington, Kentucky. But he was born in Steubenville, Ohio. Breaking oh, ball misses inside. Yeah, how yeah, about that, huh? Paid his dues. He kicked around for eight years before finally getting his first taste of big league baseball in 2013 with the Diamondbacks. 21 games with Arizona, and then last year only three games with the Yankees. But organizationally, he's been with Colorado, Seattle, Arizona, Miami, New York, and now Baltimore. Well, he's off to a good start for Baltimore. Broke his bat and out of play. Wow. How many people had a shot at that one? Even Andre, I think, mis misplayed it. I think he had a chance down there. He had the short arms. <laughs> <laughs> As usual. <laughs> Come on, you can't dive? Look at him. <laughs> he wants to say something, but we just can't hear him. It's too dark, too bad. Now the 2-2. Two -two. This was fouled over the other side. And that's been an eight-pitch at bat for Alani. And a full count. Yeah. 
I don't know, Rick. When you're struggling like Lonnie is right now, is this is this a kind of a bat that you you feel better about because you've been able to see a lot of pitches, foul some pitches off? Well, and a bat like this can help you in the batter's box because you see so many pitches. But end results are end results, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Two down. I would think if you're if you're in a funk, the worst thing that can happen to you is you go up there and maybe swing at the first pitch and pop it up, or well, you're out of there on three pitches. Bad. Sometimes if you swing at that first pitch, he had an eight pitch at bat. He's just he's fouling everything off. He's tardy on fastballs down the left field line. It's, he's having a tough time putting it in play. And when he does, it's not with authority. He's just going through one of those. I don't know if he's caught in between as a hitter or what. Now the Orioles go to a three-man shift on the left side of the infield for Jan Gomes. He singled through the left side in the second inning, struck out back in the fourth. No balls and two strikes. With the Indians down five to one here in the sixth. High pop, right field. Delman Young moving in and near the line makes the catch. Indians go one, two, three, and we'll go to the seventh, 5 1 Baltimore. By Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T Uverse, as more channels on the go than cable. What do you think? Going to get your paddle boat out there after the game? Why not? Beautiful. 5-1 Baltimore. AT&T Uverse rewind. Adam Jones has hit a couple of home runs in the series. Both of them coming off the breaking ball. He has smoked them both. Number eight and nine. Batting fourth for Baltimore. Jones in his three at bats has seen four pitches.
Ryan Webb worked a one, two, three, sixth inning. Well, and he's a Jones free swinger. Has a base hit here in the seventh. So it took him all three games, but he's now hit for the cycle. But being aggressive, he gets a high sinker there, and it's easy for him to take it the other way. He didn't try to pull that ball. Takes the single to right. That's hit number nine for Baltimore on the afternoon. Second hit for Jones. A single, a double, a triple, and two homers in the series. And now Matt Wieters. It was scored a triple in the fifth. It was a weird ball. It hit off the wall, Karen by Gomes. And then Wieters just kept on, or not Gomes, Moss. And then he just kept running from yeah, he caught between Moss, second and third. Putting his head down, and uh, that was really a heads-up play on Wieters' part because he's not blessed with speed. He's a catcher. But the old decoy got him into third base, and it, it got him a run. Not to say they wouldn't have scored anyway, but still, man on third, nobody out. It's a free at bat for Davis, and he drove him home. Strike call to the outside corner. For Baltimore, it's a, offensively, they have a 35-point difference between home and away hitting. You know, they're much better at home, but they haven't showed it today. They've been swinging the bat very well. Nine hits. Yesterday, a different story. They had six off Salazar, but they had 11. The first game off Markham or, and, and staff. Now, it's a Baltimore club that, like Cleveland, has really struggled to find any sort of consistent momentum over the course of the season. Indians have been playing much better of late. They came in winning seven of their last ten. Really their first good push, good stretch uh, of the year. But for the Tribe, it seems like every time they get right close to that 500 mark, they take a couple of steps back. They just can't seem to get there and get over yeah, it. Yeah, that's not an easy thing to do. They've had, they had, what, they were nine games under. Yeah. So, I mean, they had a ways to go. Yeah. Swung on him as he strikes him out. So Ryan Webb with his third strikeout. Two hits that propelled him in that inning. This is what kept it going. Machado, an infield single after 7, 8, and 9 set the table. Then a really good pitch by Snyder. Takes it the other way and drives in two more for a three-run inning. That, that breaks your back right there when you have a chance to get out of it. He had two outs on 11 pitches. And then after that, they were able to get him. So now Francona going to go to the bullpen. Got a timeout as Mark Zipchinski coming on when we come back.
5-1 Baltimore leading it. We're in the seventh inning. Coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio, it's Indians Live, presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Chris Davis, the batter, he drove in a run with a sack fly in the fifth inning. Mark Zipchinski making his 28th appearance on the year. The low and away ball one. Low and away, two balls and new strikes. For Zipchinski. Tied for third in the American League coming in with 27 appearances. In his last 10 games, he has not allowed an earned run. And over his last 17 games, he's allowed just one earn run. Two one pitch. Double play ball potentially. Nope. Off the glove of Chisinau into center field and Jones will go yeah, to third. There's nobody there. Chisinau playing shortstop so easy for Jones to go all the way. You're not going to lead the pitcher to third base, that's for sure. That's going to be the second error of the day by Chisenhall. This is a, a double play ball as well. He just can't field it. And Jones knows nobody's at third base, so he just continues to go right on to third base. So afternoon over for Zipchinski. Second double play ball of the day that Chisenhall botched. This has been one of those days for the Indians. They trail it 5-1. to one. Time out for a pitching change. Tomorrow, Team USA's first game in World Cup action as they battle Australia at 6.30. Games all weekend long on Fox, Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2, plus streaming live on Fox Sports Go. 2 on, 1 out, and the batter will be Delman Young. He is 1 for 3 today. Austin Adams making his sixth appearance. On the year, opposing hitters are two for 23 against him. Oh, he will. 
Got his first save in the Indians' 12-inning win against the Mariners. Ninety-nine miles an hour with that heater. Well, right now he's coming in. He's trying to get a, a, a tough out, keeping that runner at third base, but he's behind in the count, two and zero. Oh. Threw it right by him, two and one. Austin Adams has he's been the yo-yo guy this year, bouncing back and forth between the big league club and Columbus. I jeez. Austin started the year with the Indians and went to AAA on April 10th. Got called back two days later when Jan Gomes went on the deal. And then sent back again on the 18th of April. Struck him out. Two down. So in that really? at bat, he saw 99, 98, 97. Yeah, he <laughs> came back and challenged him with the fastball, which is a good job, man. He elevated it at one time, and then he throws it right by him. It was no surprise. Here it is. Let's see if you can get it. He certainly could not. So you get the second out of the inning. Not that easy to time it, is it? Time it up. Jimmy Paredes. He's one out of three. Well, the other thing about Austin is that he's not afraid to suck up some some dirty work. He's pitched at least two innings in three of the five times he's pitched for the Indians. That's hammered right center field. That'll get a run home as Jones scores. Davis goes to third. Well, there's your guy with runners in scoring position. Paredes gets a big hit with two outs, makes it a 6-1 to one game to score Jones. So the error comes back to haunt him. They will be unearned runs, but that one was right down the middle. Paredes jumps on it, takes advantage of it. He gets his second hit of the day, the Orioles' 10th. So the extra out in the inning certainly, look at that. Two outs, runners in scoring position, 10 for 14. Yeah, I can't remember, Rick, when he batted in the wow. fifth inning. Was Young in scoring position, or did he get in the scoring position after Paredes hit? Uh, no, I think it was after. So he's one for two, which is that's his season average. Spun him out of the way. Six one Baltimore is JJ Hardy awaits the one oh. It's inside two balls, no strikes. Well, 10 pitches all over 95. And he walks him on four pitches. So now the bases are loaded. And it brings up Ryan Flaherty.
tied him up. Good pitch. It's 0-2. Adams trying to get out of a bases loaded mess. Keep it a 6-1 ball game. Two strike pitch. Way outside. That can't be easy to stab when it's at 99 miles no. an hour. No, they, you're right. You get those guys that come up there and sometimes they take off on them and they it's not easy to catch those guys. Strikes about to end the inning. Orioles, though, add a run to their lead. We've reached the seventh inning stretch. Brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Baltimore as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, and it's Miller time, brought to you by Miller Lite. We've been flashing back all weekend long, primarily to the 1997 ALCS between Cleveland and Baltimore. But two years prior to that, they met here in Cleveland on September the 8th. It was a long time coming, huh, Rick? Yes, it was, boy. See a fly ball, Jim Tomey, third base. September 8th, boy, that was a day that people were waiting for all, all around Ohio. Any Cleveland Indians fan, they clinch. Yeah, very special night. And think about that. They clinched and still had pretty much a month to go before postseason yeah. play even began. Yep. 100 wins and 144 games that year. Chaz Rowe pitched a 1-2-3-6. Stays on to work the seventh as Michael Bourne leads it off and takes a strike. Bourne is 0 for 2, struck out and bounced into a fielder's choice.
Down in the dirt. Pitch outside, two and one. Out of play. Left-hander T.J. McFarland getting loose for Baltimore now. Just over 20 pitches made by Rowe. Up and away, full count. Six runs on ten hits for Baltimore, nine left. One run, four hits, six left for Cleveland. Born strikes out, one down. Mazda game break time. Let's head to the corner. Here's Al. Hey, Matt Rick. Let's head to Chicago where the White Sox take it on the Tigers. They scored three here in the bottom of the first thanks to Abisail Garcia's sixth home run of the season, a three-run shot. So far, the White Sox are making that hold up. 4-2 Chicago over Detroit. Sixth inning, Matt. Thanks, Al. Kansas City shutting out Texas 3-0. They're in the sixth inning. Minnesota blanking Milwaukee 2-0 there in the fifth. Mike Avila's 0 for 2 on the day. Takes a strike. That sun's starting to come out now, and the cloud's moving away. And a hard hit ground ball in the hole. And a one-off base runner now as we turn it over to the top of the order. And out comes Buck Showalter. He quickly makes the call. McFarland getting loose in that dugout. But Avila's hit this one on the nose. He gets it by shortstop J.J. Hardy into left field. So a one-out single. That'll be it for Chaz Rowe. Left-hander T.J. McFarland coming on when we return. New pitcher for Baltimore is left-hander T.J. McFarlane. Jason Kipnis due up for the Tribe. And McFarlane making his second appearance in the series. He pitched an inning and two-thirds in the series opener. Scoreless, walked one, struck out one.
Not surprisingly, when McFarland came on Friday night, the first battery face was Jason Kipnis. On again to face Jason. Got him to ground out right back to the pitcher. The Tribe farmhand at one time. Great base hit in the right field, and Mike Avilas will stop at second. Back-to-back no. <laughs> hits here in the seventh. He greets him with the first pitch. And a base hit between first and second. So Kipnis ready to hit right there. Back-to-back -back singles. First uh, one out with uh, two men aboard now for Santana. Santana, a woeful series, just one for eight. High and deep down the left field line, but foul. Well onto the home run porch. One ball, two strikes. Looks like Hunter up and throwing in the Orioles' bullpen. Indians had two on, two out in the second, did not score. They had two on with nobody out in the fourth and did not score after the RBI double by Moss got them their first run. Two on, two out in the fifth, could not capitalize. Two on, one out here in the seventh. And Santana flinches, but it's low. Two and two. He had that protection on his back leg like he was going to hit left hand. I forgot it's two two. So he switched it to the front leg. Pop back out of play. At least he brought the right batting helmet with him. That's right. <laughs> well, you're the switch hitter there. You expect to see, but he had the left-hander on the mound. See, he got ready probably when Rowe was starting the inning. 2-2. Two, two. Low and away. Full count. David Murphy due up next. Ryan Rayburn perhaps waiting in the wings. We'll see. Oh, I'm sure he is. That's why they have Hunter going. He will be in the wings. Here comes Rayburn now. Yep. And the payoff pitch. Ball four. The bases are loaded. So the Indians down five still have a chance to claw their way back into this thing. With an opportunity now, base is loaded, one out. Now, Ryan Rayburn is announced, so will Buck Showalter make the counter move or with left-handed hitter Brandon Moss behind him? Well, usually, Does he elect to stay with McFarland. Let's see, Buck is usually very quick out of that dugout, and Here there he comes. comes. He's fast. <laughs> 
He just wants to make sure he's announced. He's going to go get Hunter. So base is loaded. One out. Indians down five. Rayburn will be coming to bat. Hunter will be coming to pitch for Baltimore. Six-one is our score, and there's still a chance for the tribe to get themselves right back in this thing. But it's going to take some work. They've got the opportunity, however. Tommy Hunter coming on for Baltimore. Hunter this year, 23rd appearance. He's given up 24 hits in his 22 innings. He's not a couple of homers. He's only walked three, and he struck out 16. Hunter, usually a power arm. He throws into the mid-90s, and that's why Rayburn, that's what he will see. Probably some fastballs, but the Indians right back in here. One-out single by Avilas, and then they went to the bullpen. Kipnis gets a single, and then he walks Santana. So, yeah, base hit here. They can get themselves back into the ball game. Ryan Rayburn on the year is four for 13 as a pinch hitter with six. Runs batted in. Doesn't get many opportunities to bat against the right-handed pitcher. But he hammers this one at first off the glove of Davis. He recovers the flip the first. They get the out there. Oh, is that a huge play for Baltimore by Davis. Run scores at 6-2. to two. But that had a chance to get by him and really be the makings of a big inning for the Tribe. But... Davis able to knock it down, Rick, just kind of out of the webbing of his glove. Well, yeah, he stayed with it. And Hunter did his job because he got over there in time. And watch the flip. He's got to flip it behind him. But the reason why he was able to do that, Hunter hustled to get over there in position and beat the runner down the line. So he got over there in plenty of time. The run scores, so give uh, Rayburn the RBI. But now the Indians could really use a two-out base hit here. Just the 11th at bat this year for Ryan against the right-handed pitcher. Now Moss pops it back out of play. Brandon Moss doubled in a run in the fourth. He also popped up with two on and two out to end the fifth inning. Outside, one and one. Took something off and way out in front of it. Well, 10 mile an hour difference with that slider and his fastball.
Moss strikes out, and the inning fizzles again for Cleveland. They get a run after seven, trail six to two. the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Six two our score eighth inning top of the order for Baltimore. Ryan Rayburn stays in the game. Nice slider. You can see once you gear up for that fastball, you get it started. Machado down on the count 0 2 now. Yeah, and he just blew him away. Third strikeout for Adams. One down here in the eighth. Yeah, he gets that fastball up, belt higher above, Matty. You're not going to get on top of it. That's 98. Can't catch up. It's a great pitch with two strikes. That's one right there where you see it. you got to swing at it. Travis Snyder had a huge two-out, two-run single back in the fourth inning. That's something the Indians have been sorely missing the last two games. They got away with it yesterday, winning 2-1, to one, but they left some opportunities out there. Left 10 men on base in the ballgame. Swing and a miss. Snyder strikes out. Back to back. Here in the eighth. Three straight going back to the seventh for Adams. The end game box score for Baltimore looks like this. Snyder the big hit I told you about. 
Jones has scored a couple, hit the home run on the first that enabled Baltimore to play from in front today. It was the third inning that was the big inning. That, it was strange. Strange, the first two were out, and then five guys reached in a row. Infield hit and a big two-out base hit. Propelled him to three runs in that inning, and that really was the difference. Breaking ball misses, and it's 2-0. and oh. Foul right back. Two down in the inning. And a 6-2 Baltimore lead. The 2-1 pitch. Jones swing and a miss. And we're even up at 2-2. Two and two. Now 2-2 two, two pitch. As a pop-up, playable for Santana as he backpedals into foul territory. The inning is over. Middle of the eighth. Tribe down four. Bottom of the eighth inning. Tommy Hunter, who came on to get the final two outs of the seventh, stays on for Baltimore. David Lowe has entered the game now as a defensive replacement for Travis Snyder in left field. Nick Swisher to lead off. 0 for 2 today, hit by a pitch back in the fourth inning. Breaking ball for a strike. I don't have to look any further than the fourth inning to pinpoint where this game went south today for Cleveland. There's a drive deep right field. Will it stay fair? It is a foul ball just in front of the pole. 
Back in that fourth inning, five straight two-out hits for Baltimore, or five straight reached with two outs for Baltimore as they scored three. And then on the bottom half of the inning, the Indians had back-to-back doubles to start. Then Swisher was hit by a pitch, so they had two on, a run in, nobody out, and a chance to come right back and get themselves back into the game. Instead, Chisinau, Gomes both struck out, Bourne grounded out, and they've never yeah. really been Norris, in it since. They've been Norris went at him with his fastball, yeah. and he was able to get a couple of strikeouts. You're right, they couldn't capitalize. But Norris, it was a, a guy that making his first start in about a month. It was on the dis- disabled with bronchitis. But came out. He's looking for his first win on the road. He only went five, but the bullpen has kind of picked up right where he left off, getting out of jams when they needed to in the seventh. Another drive, right field. This one playable, though, for Delman Young. One away. You know, the Indians' first three reached, and it was started by Murphy with a double. And then Moss comes back, keeps his double in the line. They have one. Then there was a pickoff play at second base. The Orioles challenged that call. He looked like he was out. But he was. Uh, the call stands, and then he comes back. He gets two strikeouts and a little weak ground ball. And he was able to get himself out of the inning. That was after he hit Swisher. So they had their first three aboard. Lonnie Chisenhall finds a hole, and he singles for Chisenhall. That snaps an 0 for 13 slump. One on, one out here in the eighth now for Jan Gomes. Gomes is one for three on the day. One ball, one strike. Gomes did strike out as we showed you in a key at bat in that fourth inning. That was a lengthy battle between he and starter Bud Norris. But it looks like he's starting to get his offensive game back. He he is. He's starting to get his feel in the batter's box. In that at bat where he did strike out, he had a 2-0-3-1 count. If you remember, Norris came back and threw two sliders on the 2-0 count. 3-1 3-1 count. He fouled off a couple of fastballs, and then he retired him with a high fastball. One on, one out here in the eighth. Tried down four. Waves at an off-speed pitch. And that is out number two. Second strikeout for Hunter. And it will bring up Michael Bourne, who is 0 for 3 today, 0 for 9 in the series. And he flies to right to end the inning. We'll go to the ninth, 6-2 Baltimore.
6-2. Baltimore leads it as we go to the ninth. And let's take a look back at our Wayside Furniture keys to the game. Carlos Carrasco just didn't have it today, Rick. And, I, again, I go back. Terry Francona came out in that fifth inning with the trainer. I don't know if there was something physically bothering him today or he just, just one of those days. It happens to everybody. And the Indians offensively have just not been able to get the big hit. You know, look at it in the series. Five for 27 with runners in scoring position. Not able to capitalize. Zach McAllister coming on for the Indians now here in the ninth. 22nd time. He'll be facing Weeders, Davis, and Young. Oh, boy, that is hit a ton. Deep right field, and Moss will watch it leave the yard. Matt Weeders with his first home run of the year. He's had quite a series to come back for Baltimore. He has a double, a triple, and now a home run among his cachet of hits against the Indians this weekend. Yeah, look out. Their offense may get rolling. You get this guy back in there. That was a good swing, a fastball down, and he gets it out of here. The 0-1, upstairs. That ball's hit pretty hard. Left center field. That's headed to the wall and off. And in the second, Davis head down, chugging, slides safely in with a double. They have hit some balls hard here today. Well, you see the strength of Davis. Chris Davis, a fastball. He gave him swinging room. It went away, and he just stayed on it. Takes it off the wall. So a home run and a double to start the ninth here. Baltimore with a 7-2 lead. Seattle comes to town Tuesday for a three-game series to wrap up the homestand. Mariners down one nothing early to Tampa today. They come in having lost eight of their last ten games. Tigers have taken a 5-4 lead over Chicago. They're in the eighth inning now at U.S. Cellular Field. Rangers-Royals 3-3 now in the seventh. Minnesota still blanking Baltimore, two, or Milwaukee, 2 to nothing there in the sixth. Back out of play off the bat at Delman Young. Chris Davis at second base with nobody out. And the 2-2 two -two to Young. Fouled right back.
A little over 18,000 today for the series finale between the Indians and O's. Warm day here at the ballpark. Beautiful. Just about perfect. 80 at game time. A little cloudy so you didn't get the sun beating down on you all day if you're out there in the seats. But a lot warmer than yesterday. Almost 20 degree difference at game time. Top yeah, five. big difference from yesterday. That wind was blowing straight in. Yesterday, that cool breeze coming off the lake. But it's amazing how that can happen in just a few hours. I mean, it, like you said, it was coming straight out of the north, right off the water. And then sometime overnight, the wind shifted, coming up out of the south. All the difference in the world. The 2-2. Into center field. Avilas runs it down, but he can't get himself turned to make a play at second. And Davis, he didn't stray too far off the bag anyway. So that'll be the first out of the inning. Let's just take a look at another. Yeah, another as a look. base runner there, you're not sure. You just stay put. And that wasn't hit hard enough to get over his head. So they get the first out, though. Jimmy Paredes, two for four today. Oshenik overruled us earlier. He said Paredes did have a runner in scoring position when he batted in that uh, fifth inning. So officially one for three on the day with a runner in scoring position. Well below his season average of 500. <laughs> well, he's got an opportunity here. Out of play, left side. Now the O2. Got a piece of that. Jimmy Paredes is a career 289 hitter in the minor leagues. First season in pro baseball was in 07. Major league debut with the Astros in 2011. He hit 286 in 46 games. The next year, just a buck 89 over 24 games. Only a buck 92 the following year in 48 games. Last year, nine games with Kansas City and the rest of the time in the big leagues with Baltimore. You have to wonder what the Orioles saw in him and what it is that has enabled him to have so much success this year. And I know it's only not even half a season, but wow. You yeah. have to be impressed with what he's been able to he's do. He's been very good for the Orioles this year. Big part of their offense early on when they've had some injuries and things like that with Weeders out of the lineup. He's been <laughs> DHing a lot, too. Yeah, two down now for J.J. Hardy. Takes a strike. You know, sometimes it's one of those situations, too, Arch. You, you have injuries, and you're like, we've got to plug somebody in, and he just takes off because he finally gets an opportunity where he knows yep. he's going to be in there every day. Opportunity knocks you. Go out there and prove you get a, you need at-bats. You want at-bats, and that's what you have to prove to your manager, man. Let's go. For the Indians this year, David Murphy came out. You know, he wasn't in the lineup at all, but got an opportunity. And every time he played, he started getting hits, and he hasn't stopped yet. That's what you have to do sometimes. Popped up on the infield, going out Jason Kipnis, and now Moss comes in to make the catch, inning over. Orioles get a home run from Weeders, and they now lead it 7-2. to two.
We go now to the bottom of the ninth inning, but before that, let's take a look at our Pat O'Brien Chevrolet play of the game. Real backbreaker in the fourth. Travis Snyder with a two-out, two-run single. Did a terrific job of getting the bat to the ball. Why it was a backbreaker, it was the fifth straight Oriole to reach safely after there were two outs and nobody on base. Yep, they they made it a 4 nothing lead at that point and just... Indians really never recovered, Rick. No, it's just uh, it was one of those innings, boy, that, that took them out of it. And we certainly can't hang the blame on the pitching here today. While it is seven to two, it, it was a it was a ball game throughout most of the afternoon. But offensively, the tribe just never able to get that. You're right. Get but, their we've traction. said that a number of times this weekend that you know opportunity is there, but they haven't able been able to take advantage. Darren O'Day to finish for Baltimore. Mike Avila is going to lead off for the Tribe. He's one for three today. Right back to O'Day. One away here in the bottom of the ninth. Jason Kipnis, two more hits this afternoon, two for four. Came in with the best home batting average in the American League at 398. So he did nothing to hurt that. Also had the fifth best average in day baseball, hitting 379. He's Added two more knocks to his hit total, giving him 76 on the year. He started the day second in that category. Down low. Jason with an 18-game home hitting streak. It's a good feeling when you're locked in like that. One ball, two strikes. Mike Pachta telling me that Kip now hitting 402 on the year here at Progressive Field. Number one home average in the league. A little bit low. And the 2-2. Fouled back out of play. Carlos Santana waiting on deck. So Kipnis has worked the count back to full, three and two. And the payoff pitch. Foul back out of play. Little Kipnis. slider. 
toward left center field, and Jones can't get it. It's over his head, off the wall on one hop, and into second base with another double is Jason Kipnis. Three straight hits now in the ball game for the Indians' leadoff man. Well, how about that? That was a good at bat. So he picks on a slider down and away. Boy, he stays on. The extension getting through the baseball. Good swing to drive it into the gap again. His second double, his third hit on the day. So Kipnis keeps it rolling. That is now 18 doubles for Jason. He hit a good pitch at slider, trying to go back, you know, backdoor slider. Didn't fool him. Now Carlos Santana 0 for 3. Couple of ground outs. He flied to left. Walked his last time up. Hammered foul. Look out. Ooh. One pitch, taking low. Now Baltimore getting their closer up. Look, Showalter not going to take any chances today. He feels like he's got one in hand. He wants to make sure it stays that way. But the Indians with one out, trying to get a little something going here in the ninth. Santana takes a strike, and it's one and two. Santana chases one and strikes out. An 0 for 4 for Carlos and just one out of nine in the series. Stay tuned for Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Alan Jensen will be firing up the set from the corner here at Progressive Field. Ryan Rayburn. An RBI ground out is only time up in the seventh. Chops this one foul. One ball, one strike. Two down, Kipnis at second. And Rayburn cuts and misses. O'Day has thrown 12 out of 17 pitches, four strikes. Here in this ninth inning, trying to finish it off. Rayburn will try to extend it. Brandon Moss would be next. Fouled out of play. Trying to run the fastball in there to to Ryan. Fouled it off. See if he follows that up with a slider away looking for the strikeout. Keeping him honest. He went to it, but it was off the plate. Yeah, nope. nowhere to where he could swing at it. And the 2 2. Hit foul.
The 2-2. Two -two. Way up high and a full count. So Darren O'Day working himself potentially into a little trouble here. The payoff. Rayburn with a base hit in the left field. Kipnis coming around third. He will score. The Indians get their third run of the afternoon. And two of the three have been driven in by Ryan Rayburn, who didn't even come into this game until the seventh. And now Brandon Moss coming to the plate. And here comes Buck Showalter. Yeah, he's not wasting any time. That's why he had his closer up, just in case. It's not even a safe situation, but he doesn't want to get it, let well, it get that four, close. Four run. You're, the runner, uh, the tying runs on deck. Four, five, six. Tying run being the hole, oh, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. In any event, we got a pitching change here in the ninth. Didn't see they had two left-handers warming up in the uh, bullpen. The closer, Zach Britton, and also Cesar Cabral. So it's Cesar Cabral who gets the call first. Britton still up in the Baltimore bullpen. So it's not a save situation yet. yet. <laughs> but if it gets to that point, we're going to see Britton. But for now, Buck Showalter will try to see if he can get the third out with his other left-hander, Cabral, here. Who goes up against Brandon Moss. Well, yeah. you get a base hit, keep it going. You never know. Moss, one out of three, an RBI double in the fourth. And there is Britton. We had we had seen him up in the inning, but we didn't see Cabral. I did not see he him He must have already been warmed up and wasn't throwing at that time. So here comes Moss. 7-3 ball game. And he pops it sky high out of play. Ryan Rayburn, an RBI single here in the ninth inning. In the dirt. Ooh, good pick. One one, swing and a miss. 
Moss down on the count. One ball and two strikes. And the one-two pitch lays off just off the plate. Pulls it foul. Down into the photo pit. Moss gets another chance here with Rayburn at first. Two down. Two ball, two strike count in the ninth. Indians down 7-3. And he strikes out to end the game. 7-3 is the final score as Baltimore takes two out of three from Cleveland to win the series. Dropping the Indians two games below the 500 mark at 27 and 29. Baltimore will leave town 26 and 30. Bud Norris gets the win after going five. He's two and four. The loss to Carlos Carrasco who went four plus. He is now seven and five on the season. Indians had some pretty good mojo coming into today's series finale. They had won seven out of their last ten. But now they'll have to sit for a few days or sit for a day and get ready for a three-game series with Seattle who comes here on Tuesday. Yeah, but there's not much you can say. Flat on Friday night. You know, I thought, you know, maybe the time getting in, it, it hurt them a little bit. But offensively in the series... Uh, that, I think that was the big difference. They couldn't do anything. They couldn't hit with runners in scoring position. A tough inning today. They had the opportunity to win a series. They fought back with a great pitch game by Salazar yesterday. But um, all in all, Baltimore wins the series two out of three, and that's what counts. So that's the ball game. 7-3, the final score. Off day tomorrow. We'll be back with you on Tuesday when the Indians take on the Seattle Mariners. For Rick Manning and Andre Knott, I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for Indians Live coming up next.